Okay, guys. Uh, hot topics been going around. I've been hearing um, a lot of talk in the comments section, a lot of videos coming out, a lot of articles, and they kind of have a lot of them. This kind of flavor, as you can see here, uh, have the Miami Dolphins finally fix their offensive line. And uh, here, the monkey in front of you, Curtis, is saying, man, I'm still very concerned about this offensive line. And so something's not jiving, you know, either I'm wrong or a lot of this uh, trend that we're seeing is incorrect. Now, we're not going to know till week one. This is all evaluation. I don't really reject anyone's evaluations as foolish. I admit that I can be wrong. It's, it's, I'm not infallible. So I want to cover why I could be wrong. And then also maybe some context to help support why I view things the way I do. Now, I got a, a comment from a great guy, Bill. Uh, you can see here, uh, the general idea is that, Hey man, we ran for over 200 yards and you're like not hot to trot on the offensive line. Uh, you know, you saw some other guys that did a good job uh, presenting their evidence. And I said, you know what? Thank you for really being um, a guy who can say, I disagree with you, but I, I agree to disagree on this one. So I, I respect Bill a ton. I respect those who say that I'm wrong in, in a good manner because that disagreement is where you hone your evaluations. Sitting in a bubble that, you know, saying everything you do is great or everything you like to hear is what you're listening to is not going to get you better. So I'm going to dig into that uh, out of respect to Bill, out of the, the volume of sound that I hear about um, the Dolphins getting their offensive line right. And so I, I saw this as an, in another article. I, didn't, I forgot to put down the name of it, but it was... Offensive Lee and Eichenberg, who is competing for the starting left spot, is chomping at the bit to return after he was held out of the Texans game because of an injury. Isaiah Wynn started at left guard in Houston and played well into the second half. And this is kind of the tenor that we're getting. Now, uh, just from a quick uh, reading comprehension, he played well in the second half, but he didn't play well in the first half, uh, played in the second half. That's kind of... Interesting. So he didn't really play well at all, uh, but I'll get into that. I mean, that's pretty, pretty clear. And especially if you're talking about the second half when, you know, you got basically third and fourth stringers in there and he's supposed to be a starter. That's not the greatest sound, but uh, I want to get into how I can be wrong. Now, clearly against the Atlanta Falcons, uh, we had 168 yards or so, 5.5 uh, five yards a carry, or is it 6 yards a carry or something like that? I wrote it down, but I got a big mess. It was a good uh, amount of yards per carry. And then we come back the following week against um, Houston, and we get 205 for 5.5. That's like almost 400 yards rushing. Now, you can't knock those stats. Those are good rushing stats for a team that struggled to run the football with an uh, 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 offensive caller who was a run game coordinator. We've all been asking for more runs and run effectiveness, and we get it. And the trajectory is going up from week one to week two. That is great, great signs in a bubble. But you've got to say that's awesome, you know, and this is without to run in. Now, I've seen some articles like, you know, they did this without Tehran and Eichenberg and Cotton. And I think that's like hyperbolic and almost ridiculous. Uh, Two thirds of it. Cotton, nobody even knew who Cotton was. He played poorly in the playoff game last year. Or maybe some people say he didn't. But you go look at it, he was like four pressures he let up in a sack and stuff. So I don't really view it as being good. But he was a nobody on the radar. And if that's who we're holding on, and then Eichenberg, who was the worst left guard in the league last year by a country mile. So those two, you can't really add those into factors. But Tehran, clearly, without Tehran and still getting 168 and then 205, you add Tehran into the mix. And we're seeing a trend that looks really good. I mean, how can you really just out of hand dismiss that. So when you look at the whole soup, 
This team is doing what it's being asked to do, sans its leader. And so you're seeing uh, Gaskin do well. You're seeing Mostert do well. You're seeing A-Chain do well. You're seeing Ahmed do well. And all that stuff are clear indications of this team heading in the right direction. Again, though, I just want to say in a bubble, I'm going to add some out of context to that. You could throw it away or you can keep it. So when you look at this as is, it is a fair evaluation on the face to say we're headed in the right direction and indicating that my evaluation isn't the correct one. So I that's this is why I don't just outright dismiss some of these takes and I, I'm hoping that they're right I would love nothing more this is a kid who uh, who was in, when he was in elementary school did a, a book report on Larry Zonka and Larry Zonka with a broken nose and a little you uh, guard face guard was the face of the Dolphins for me and got me into loving this team. And so there's nothing I want more as a guy who was a running back to see this be legit. And I do hope it is. Now, I'm going to get into the other context part, which will be the contrary view. And this is just here to present evaluation points for you to make your decision, but ultimately it will be proven out. Will all learn and grow if we're really trying to seek a better evaluation than yesterday. So uh, before I get into why I think that uh, I like my evaluation, I can't get off of it. Um, I just want to give you guys a shout out. I appreciate all you guys do. I appreciate the likes, the subscribes, the comments, all that stuff makes this channel go. And I'm just grateful for all that you do. I'm told that if you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell. So when I do my little thing over here, the monkey rings his bell, uh, you can come and stop by and see what I got to say. So I thank you for everything. I want to give you a shout out and shout out to Ace Spread, my sponsor, because without the two of you, this show ain't going down. Acebred's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. Okay, so I gave you the reasons why I could be wrong, and I think they're they're legit, you know, uh, in just in in a uh, broad based look at it, but specifically. Let's understand, A, uh, preseason isn't like regular season. Uh, the D callers aren't calling to stop stuff. They actually, this goes both ways. You know, you put guys in positions so their weakness is challenged to see, hey, are they growing? Can I trust them? And so sometimes you'll take a guy who's bad at contain and you put him in contain on a critical situation to say, hey, I want to see what this is about. I don't really care about the score. Everybody wants to win, but it's there's the evaluations from the staff is far more valuable. And this happens all over the place with all kinds of stuff. It goes each, each way, but just to lay it out there. But also, let's consider the Atlanta Falcons were the 23rd worst run defense in the league last year. Now, they could increase and get better, uh, but this is a lower-end team. Now, uh, when you look at it, they used a bunch of starters and we didn't use that many last week. And that really does kind of, again, tilt towards maybe this is legit growth in our run game. Uh, but this is a thin and and not so good Atlanta defense. And maybe it's improved, but we didn't see it. Uh, so... You have to hold that, but I don't want to focus on that too much. I want to get into this week that just passed with the Texans. So I did a little graphic here. You can see here. Last year, 2022 run defense, uh, they were 170 yards per game, which is the worst in the league, number one. 5.1 y- uh, yards per carry, which was fourth. 2,841 yards allowed which was number one. Number two was 2674, which is 200 yards, just about um, less than the Texans. So they actually gave up 
you know, an extra 200-yard game more than the second worst it run defense in the league. That is really, 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 really bad. Now, they were 25th in rushing touchdowns, which was number two. And they did make additions, and you have to factor in. Corey Littleton is not really a big addition. He's a spot player at best for his career, like four or five years. Now, Denzel Perryman is a good run defender. He is a piece that you want to factor in to say, hey, they're not the same as last year. They're taking a step forward, which is 21 snaps. That He had 21 snaps, which means he played a little over a quarter, and that's a fact you got to keep in there. Now, they signed Sheldon Rankins, but he didn't play any snaps. And then they drafted rookie Ed, uh, 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 edge player Will Anderson Jr., who played 12 snaps. So he didn't really play... You know, he played a little bit like me, uh, uh, two thirds of a quarter. So the guys they brought in, uh, really, they got a limited contribution. But this was a poor unit to begin with. And so that is one thing to consider that we rushed 35 yards over what they normally rush, but that was with their starters. Now, if you look at what we brought in, we used our starters and primary backups a, a pretty good amount. And when you add in that, the way we judge this is what units and players are going against each other. If if I ran my starters for the entire game and they were using uh, second, third, and fourth stringers, whatever total you got, you got to mitigate that and add context to that by the fact of talent uh, differential. You savvy. So uh, Eichenberg, who would have probably hurt our chances, wasn't in. Uh, Tehran, who would have helped our chances, we talked about he wasn't in. Uh, Cotton, who I don't think is really all that good, but maybe I'm wrong, he wasn't in. But then you got Lamb, who's going to probably be your primary backup tackle. He played 18 plays. Jackson, who's going to be your starter, he played 18 plays. Hunt, who's going to be your primary starter, he played 18 plays. Feeney, who's your primary backup at center, and maybe even guard at the stage, he played 55 plays. Uh, Cedric O, who is a longtime vet and excellent run defender. He played 28 plays. Wynn, who's your, right now, most people are saying he's your primary left guard option as a starter. He played 46 plays. Jones, who I like, but he's kind of maybe a third stringer in some regards. He played 11 plays. Connor played 18 plays, who's your starter. Smythe, who's your starter, is 15 plays. Saubert, who's a vet, played 20 plays. And Croft, who's a vet, played 10 plays. So we had a bulk of these guys... Going into the second uh, quarter, we had Mostert starting, who's a starter. Uh, Ahmed, I don't really view him as a starter. Talented, uh, so you can't really add that in. But we played a lot of talented guys for a solid amount against a defense that didn't really full play, play their full complement and wasn't really good to begin with. But we still cranked off those yards, and you got to take it for what it is. But again, when you go back and you look at the film, there were a lot of big chunk yard plays. And that's what I said our offense is going to be about in the run game. It's not going to be steady, Eddie. It's going to be these pop runs. And so it does say, hey, that's how we made it last year, and that's what it looked like this year. But my take is, if you look at the Texans and you realize last week they went against the Patriots who um, didn't use any starters. In fact, they're using rookies and third stringers on the offensive line for the whole game. They got 71 yards on the ground and 3.1 yards per carry. And you would say, that's not good. It isn't. But they were going against the Texans starters for a pretty long time. And some guys that they expect to be, you know, secondary uh, level players. And so in that context, they, they should have shut that down to even less than that. And, you know, so when we come against them this week and you see on an individual basis how we're struggling with power, win, uh, win let up two pressures, one sack and one hit on 46, that wouldn't be a good game. And he was going against second and third stringers because he played 45 snaps. Now, uh, Hunt, he's going to be good, but he let up a, up a hit and a pressure. Uh, Jones, I think he's pretty good. He let up a hit and a pressure. 
Jackson, who's a starter, played 18 plays, 18 snaps, and he let up a hit, a hurry, and two, which was two pressures. And that's not good either. And so when you pull it all together and you see how it started off a little shaky, but it was really these big plays. And the, the way it broke open was that big run by A-Chain through the B-gap that was opened up by Jones, yoking the guy up, and he ran off the side, and Croft came in, and it hit a nice block. I got to give Croft credit for that. And that popped it on a third and long. And then the cha- the chain started rolling. The machine started rolling. Mostert had some nice runs inside, but again, we were running bulk of starters, Sands, Tehran. And so I don't really count that because – we're a playoff team, and the Texans were a top five pick. So, ultimately, this is why I think when you add in the context, I don't think that this is a bad thing what we did, but you've got to kind of mitigate the gross number of yards by the competition, by the depth and ta- of the talent on the Texans, and how we employed our starters and are a more talented team. And so I think if the trajectory and trend line is for me to be wrong, we'll see something similar when we go against Jacksonville Jaguars this week, who are the 12th best run defense. And I think if we can get yards against them, that it doesn't have to be 168 and 200. But if we're in the early goings, getting, you know, a a good chunk of yards and we have a good day, that to me says a lot more than these last two weeks. And so I hope it is what it is, what I'm seeing, what all, you know, the stats say and what everybody's saying. But to me, when you realize that Tehran is a finesse blocker with some guts, you know, to hold things, but he's more of a finesse mover type. And then you got weakness whether it's Eichenberg or Cotton or Wynn at left guard. And then you got Connor, who's susceptible to power. He's just, he's a fighter, and I like a lot what he does, but he's still susceptible to power. But then you got a stud in, in, in a hunt who can hold his water and hold his ground. But then you got Jackson, who I showed just in his 18 plays, was on the ground four or five times and gave up two pressures. And then the tight end groups, you know, they had a good day. Smythe had a very good day. Uh, this week, but in general, he's okay. And so this this level of finesse and lack of power, to me, that's the critical evals because you're going to see different kinds of teams and that have a defense and have offense. Texans had no offense this week. And then that alters the way things look as well, as well as guys making calls to stop certain things at the right time. So ultimately, that's what I got. Uh, I hope we got it. Uh, But this is my viewpoint. Uh, I'll totally say mea culpa. I'm wrong if this is the case. Oh, I got a mea culpa too. Uh, I forgot I was supposed to put it at the beginning. Uh, It wasn't uh, A-Chain with the missed block. It was Ahmed 26-28, and I was doing the thing over here going like this, doing the editing and looking over. My memory sucks, and I saw 28 out of 26. So it wasn't uh, A-Chain, which was great to hear. But that's it. I'm going to get back to some more coverage, but I just wanted to get to this part because I thought it was a critical piece. I hope you enjoyed. Curtis and catch you next time. Be well. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.